welcome 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 i'm so awkward today i don't know what's going on my lighting is horrible like nothing is going okay but salmonari and welcome back to another episode of ali kelane let's talk today we are talking hiv and aids to everyone who's tuning in for the first time please like comment subscribe watch the other videos binge if you have to but in this episode we are doing um we're talking hiv and aids and how it has changed over the years and the four main points that i want to get across is we need to talk about our language use when it comes to hiv outside of that we need to talk um prep which is pre-exposure prophylaxis i hope that's it if it's not you correct me in the comment section down below but i'm doing this video candidly um arvs and undetectable equals undetectable equals untransmissible and then we have post-exposure prophylaxis which is yeah you, you get that after you've had an encounter where you think you may have contracted HIV and AIDS. But anyway, like I'll start off this video by talking about why I decided to have this conversation. I feel like HIV is a conversation that comes up every once in a while and it comes up so weirdly and and, and all, all of the times that I've had this kind of conversations with people, it's always like, so yeah, I'd never do this with this person. I'd never date someone who has HIV, he's too much admin. And I'm always like, this is so weird because like what if i am living with hiv like i always pose that question to my friend what if i do you know what i mean so are we creating enough safe space for people with hiv to be like listen this is my situation and it is what it is but also it's none of our business but anyway like in terms of even the language where the language you use when we're talking about hiv is very problematic in the sense that um, I was, I've read that the correct way to speak about people living about HIV and relation to the people living with HIV is essentially people living with HIV so it's not the whole H, HIV positive people you know no people living with HIV that's the correct language use that I have heard and I've read about and that's how I write when I tweet about things related to HIV and people living with HIV and outside of that I want us to talk about what this whole situation the clean and there's and then there's the silence are you clean so do I say yes and then like I don't understand it so outside of that I also feel like um, a lot of people are afraid to ask where like people don't know I feel like a lot of us don't like having the conversation of asking whether like how's your sexual health how do you navigate your sexual health where do you go what are you on are you on prep what like what's going on are you in our ARVs it's always a conversation of yeah I know I'm clean like I'm good but then we start we need to start talking about when you do an STI screening an STI first before I forget STI screenings are really 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 just not an HIV test the brick no, 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 no. There's other things. There's HPV, which you can't test for, which is, which is, which is syphilis. There is chlamydia. There's, there's so many other diseases and STIs and STDs that people need to test regularly for that they don't. But I know the one that they do do um, actual tests for is syphilis. And syphilis, I was watching, there's a mini series going on on Instagram that I'll post down below where they're talking about syphilis and how it's treated essentially um so essentially syphilis needs to be part of your testing routine when you're doing your sti screening you need to do a whole summer holistic sti um screening where you involve hiv syphilis and I think hepatitis the one that attacks the liver yeah and then the, the other ones I don't know what the other ones are but yeah and then the others we'll talk about in a different video but then I want us to also talk about prep so prep is an option that is available for people who are, who are not living with HIV so if the last time you tested it was like HIV negative you can get prep and you can essentially prevent getting hiv correct me if i'm wrong like i didn't read this i'm talking candidly but like i want this conversation to be very conversation because last time you guys said i sounded like an lo teacher but yeah i'm here oh mr Kilan. but anyway um yeah oh prep um so prep you take it as if you are living with hiv you take it 
every day, you take it every day, the same way you take your supplements now that COVID is around. You take one pill every day, um, every single day, like there's no break until you decide you don't want to, do, to, to be on PrEP anymore. Outside of that, I will say I'm not necessarily sure how safe PrEP is and also PrEP should not be an indicator of whether or not you should use a condom because a lot of people like to go on PrEP and not use it correctly and then have unsafe sex because they're on PrEP. There's still syphilis, there's still HPV, there's still gonorrhea, there's, there's still hepatitis, there's still, there's so many other, there's still herpes, which is untreatable. So HIV, I feel like it had the worst promo. Someone tweeted this, I think. So I feel like HIV had the worst promo and as a result of that, now we are here trying to talk and also educate people because I'm not a know-it-all as I keep saying, please. In the comment section talk to me but yeah hiv has changed and people living with hiv who are on their arvs when they take it consistently can because can essentially get to a point where they have such low um hiv viral count in their bodies that it ends up being a situation where they can't transmit it anymore. Now, let me talk about undetectable equals untransmissible. Undetectable equals untransmissible is very tricky because it depends on each person's immune system and their lifestyle. So we can't, there's no term that says, okay, cool, you take your medication for six months and then you will be undetectable. Some people it takes longer, some people will never, don't ever get to undetectable, but it's a it's a it's a journey do you know what i mean it's a long it's a long-term journey but yeah people living with hiv would understand what i'm talking about but everyone else let's talk about undetectable equals untransmissible so essentially when someone is living with hiv and they take their medication and they are on a healthy diet and they are this and this and then they when they go do their blood work and it and then the 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 results say undetectable then that means According to partner one and partner two study, so Google is just Google partner one or partner two study and you'll see that's homework for you guys. Tell me what it's about. So essentially those were the, 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 the studies that were done on how to see how accurate, um, how, to actually test whether when you're living with HIV, you take your medication properly and you're healthy, you can, um, can you or can you not transmit to someone who's not who does not have HIV? So those partner one and partner two study. The partner one was for the heteros, and then partner two was for the homos. So those partner those two studies. <laughs> if I just said that, the two studies are the studies that essentially confirm that when you have an undetectable viral load, which is a very low HIV viral count in your body, you cannot transmit it to your HIV negative partner. Then outside of that, we need to start talking. Um, we need to talk post-exposure prophylaxis. So post-exposure prophylaxis is what you take when you have unsafe sex and you don't know the other person's um, HIV status, you know? Because this happens. Like, I'm here, I'm non-judgmental. Whether you're for condoms or you're against condoms, me, I'm neutral. Like, you have sex the way you want to have it. But if you want to be safe, I'd say get prep. But if PrEP is not an option for you because it's a commitment, it's a long-term journey, just like HIV is a long-term journey, it's a long-term journey as well. So post-exposure, we're talking post-exposure. Post-exposure is what you get if you're not on any of the things that I've listed. So if you know you are HIV negative, you had sex with someone whose status you don't know, then... What am I doing? <laughs> then you get post-exposure prophylaxis within 72 hours of having sex with that person. So yeah, and that usually ha you, you this is usually given, it's a regime. So I think it's a month or two weeks, I'm not sure. It varies, every, like every person who's taken post-exposure is always had a different um, experience of it because it's expensive. So it's a very tricky thing, but I would advise people to go on PrEP, but then still continue to use condoms because it's syphilis, gonorrhea, and the other stuff. I love saying gonorrhea. But yeah, so this is the video that I was, yeah, I was hoping I was gonna shoot it with a friend and the friend disappointed me. That's why you need to take ownership of your own content, cast. So thank you, thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of Ali Kilana Let's Talk. And I'll see you in the next video where we talk about why I am single and just take talking, dating as a queer person in South Africa, as a gay man actually in South Africa.
Mwah, love and light guys see you next time peace i always change my goodbyes